Let's make sure that history never forgets the name Enterprise. <laughs> Exclamation, everybody. And welcome to stage nine. This is not a game. Um, I've been looking around in my travails around the internet. I tend to find things that are interesting but not uh, not games but i feel like they could use a little attention here and there for the work and effort that's been put into them so i'm going to call this little series this is just going to be an occasional series but i'm going to call it uh, nerd corner because <laughs> there are some nerds and some geeks out there on the interwebs that do things for fun and for free uh, because they enjoy it and this is one of those fan-made projects that i run across in my you know, attempts to find new and exciting games and whatnot. This is done in Unreal 4 Engine. Unreal Engine 4, I should say. And uh, it is, as you might imagine, a simulation of the Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, this is a recreation of the bridge of the Enterprise from the episode Yesterday's Enterprise. This is when the, uh, if we go over to here, you can see the, the Klingons were beating the stuffing out of Starfleet uh, because the Enterprise C was thrown back through a temporal rift and uh, met the Enterprise D. And because the Enterprise C wasn't destroyed, they were the Enterprise C was trying to uh, save a Klingon outpost on Narendra 3. And uh, from a Romulan attack, the Romulans were trying to create, start a war between the Federation and Klingons because they were thrown out of time and back out of that battle and didn't die as they were intended to. Uh, they, the Romulans succeeded in creating a, ba uh, a war uh, between the Federation and Klingons. And so this is the Enterprise Bridge from that time period or that, that alternate uh, future, as it were. You see they're trying to keep it relatively true to form as everything is in here and uh, they got all, I, you know I kind of thought that they had people standing back here like I don't recall this being like this back here I sort of recall it being just like the regular show except they did have a lot of consoles here but it was people like sitting down and stuff but I guess I guess maybe I haven't quite got it right in my in my brain I'll have to go back and look at the and look at the episode for that but uh, they've also recreated several different bridges. Now, this bridge is, as I said, the yesterday's Enterprise Bridge. This is not hooked up to the rest of the ship, so I can't go anywhere from here just yet. Although, it would be nice to see them actually hook up all the other areas, like uh, 10 forward from this time period, when it was like constant uh, things, announcements going on over the, over the comms, and people looking for rations and stuff like that, ration packs. Um, they've also got Season 1's bridge, which again is not to connected to the rest of the ship yet. But you can see they've got the brown panels here uh, from Season 1. They've got some of the graphics that are a little bit different. Everything else was a little bit uh, a little bit shinier than it was before. The you know they have the seats were not here, the extra seats that they had. Uh, the carpeting was different. Uh, those kinds of things. Now, I've got the animated um, L-Cars stuff on. This does create performance problems, but I'm going to run it anyway. I haven't had as really that many hiccups as far as the performance goes on this. So I'm just going to let the, let the animated stuff run right now. Plus, I don't have the NPCs on. I will turn some NPCs on so you can see what it looks like. Um, but they do have a tendency to get in your way. Uh, so I will be turning them on just briefly and then turning them back off again. Uh, so this is season one. They have the one uh, from All Good Things. This was the end. This was the final episode of the main television series. Uh, you can see it's very, very red. And uh, this was Admiral Riker's ship. It was uh, he took the Enterprise, he rescued it from mothballs and turned it into a what they call a Galaxy X. Uh, which uh, had three three warp nacelles and and all that stuff. So they, they put a lot of effort into recreating this, and along with the the steps up and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool things. Pretty cool. And then uh, the one from Generations. This one is the one I actually like the most. Believe it or not, I know it's not 
necessarily the one that everybody comes back to. The only problem they have here is they don't have it lit properly. Um, this is actually the... I actually like the way this bridge looks better than a normal bridge because I like that they have stations over here. It looks like there's... It looks like it actually takes... You know, this ship is supposed to have 1,014 people on it and this looks like the bridge of a ship that would have 1,014 people on it, right? Because you got all these stations here. You got all these people working on things and... I wonder if I can sit in these chairs. Oh, yes, I can. How about that? How about that? So you got your, you know, engineering and all that stuff and environmental systems and science over there. Science one. Um, for some reason, there's two science ones. I don't know why, but there, there you go. More environment, engineering, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, and Worf got a chair for a change. So here's what Worf would see when he sat down. <laughs> I can't see. I can't can't see Picard's bald head anymore. This is fantastic. <laughs> I was constantly constantly getting the sheen off his head. I couldn't see where I was where I was aiming. <laughs> That's why I always missed, I tell you. <laughs> but um yeah, I like this one better. The, the only problem is they don't have like in here there was gr there was a grill of lights or was it it was in there and it was under here too. So, like, when you would walk in here, like, as they would walk around the ship, you could see, like, the lights were, had, like, a grill pattern on the walls and on the floor. It doesn't look like they have that in here, so that's the only part of this that I'm calling shenanigans on. But the rest of it, it looks, looks fine to me. I don't know why it says head and power systems. <laughs> it's, either it's a bathroom or it's an electrical outlet. You, you, you make, <laughs> make your own determination on that one. Um... But if we want to explore the rest of the ship, actually, did they? Oh, they did have the seats in there for this one. Oh, that's nice. It's very, very nice. Okay. Um, but if you want to explore the rest of the ship, you got to go to the seasons two through seven bridge, which is the one everyone is most familiar with. Up oh, and the NPCs have have arrived uh, with their weird funky hair. She, she looks like a. <laughs> her hair looks like it's a. Uh, uh, an Apple commercial, <laughs> you know, with the, the silhouette and only certain things highlight it. Yeah, that's that's what came to mind there. Um, so everything looks, you know, like it probably like it should. I mean, like like the uh, the C series had uh, as far as the bridge is concerned, is very very true to form here. Um, and they've got the the side seats and everything else. Uh, the Obviously, all the models are just, uh, you know, works in progress. These aren't... <laughs> I, I sincerely hope so, because this guy looks incredibly bored for, to be a first officer. <laughs> incredibly bored. Um, and, you know, obviously, they're just they're just placeholders right now for just to, just to make it a little bit more lively. Um, what else here? So... The one of the things you'll notice, and this is what this is what bugs me a lot when I when I see, you know, Unreal Engine um, stuff here. Oh, first of all, there is an Easter egg over here. Yep, yep. Um, but anyway, whenever I see the Unreal Engine uh, four stuff, especially stuff that's a work in progress, the one thing that always stands out to me is the bump mapping. And bump mapping is supposed to make certain materials look more realistic. Like this here, like this felt, that could definitely have the bump mapping on it because that's what it would look like in real life. But you see the the plastic next to it has it as well, which makes it look really weird. And you'll see it as particularly when we go into the ready room here. Uh, excuse me, sir. But if I if I walk up on on this, uh, if I jump up on this bench here and I get close to the painting you can see it all over this painting like this which makes things look really weird it, it makes them look dull and it, sort of from a, a lighting perspective and it makes them look just very very strange um, so I'm hoping that one of the things they do, they do especially you know they've mentioned that they're having like performance issues and stuff with it one of the things I hope they do is just remove some of this bump mapping from surfaces that don't, that it doesn't help with, you know, like paintings and stuff like that should be just smooth. Um, cause you can see even, 
how the engine is translating this. Like, uh, this reminds me a lot of like Deus Ex Invisible War, where everything in the game was bump mapped. So when the light hits it, it does this like, what do they call that? This specular, specular ref reflection? Is that what they call it? Where the light comes on and scatters a little bit along the, the texture because it's bump mapped and stuff. Whereas you would get like a normal sort of diffuse light. Instead, you get like little sparkles of light. I think that's what they call it. I'm not. I, I, I'm so out of practice as far as the terminology and stuff goes with with game uh, development that I couldn't name anything anymore, or whether I'm actually accurate or anything like that. Is this? Uh, don't know what book that is he has in there, but that's rather interesting. Um, does he have coasters? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know uh, Picard had coasters there. I guess it makes sense because of his T and stuff. Um, but then he's got the Stargazer model. You can see the bump mapping on the Stargazer model too, which makes it look really weird. Um, that really should be smooth, I would think. I mean, in real life, if you walked up to it, it you know, it, on the set itself, these probably were all not smooth like that. Uh, but it doesn't show up that way in the show. And it's kind of like, you know, this this kind of bugs me, that, that, that stuff there. And then in here is the captain's, you know, where he would order his tea. And then it looks like they haven't put in the, the toilet yet. That's where that should be. So, or, and they haven't put, uh, what's his name? Winston in there. Is that, was that the fish's name? Winston? You know, they haven't put him in there. Oh, well, I guess he's kind of there, uh, frozen in time, but, uh, they haven't got him as an actual fish in the game yet. So what shall we do now? I guess we've. I guess we can go take a look at the observation lounge now that the head is not is not done yet apparently if I go to the observation lounge yeah this is why I gotta turn the NPCs off because they'll just stand here and uh, and block me from moving around so we're gonna turn them off right now we've seen them there they've been here okay and we're gonna go to now I don't know what this is this NNSNS doctor <laughs> no idea what that is uh, oh, oh, uh, hello, the, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Houston, we have a bit of a problem here, <laughs> the ship has disappeared on me, uh, okay, let's do emergency transport, see if it puts me back on the deck. Okay. Oh, it put me in the emergency turbo lift. Huh, interesting. All right, can we go through the observation lounge now? So, yeah, I don't know what this is. I don't know where this leads to. I've never heard of that particular uh, thing there. But we can come into the observation lounge. You know, what, you know what I bet happened? You can hear how the sound just turned off in there. Well, the sound is on now, but the sound turned off at one point because I think it unloaded the bridge. Uh, and it must have unloaded my the chunk that I was in. <laughs> It's like I said, this is 0.0.6, .0 this version. So it's it's very, very early. They've been working on it for quite a while, it looks like, but it's still very, very early. We got uh, Starfleet personnel files going along here. Following graduation from the Academy, assigned as helm officer on the Pegasus. Uh, first officer at Enterprise E, blah, blah, blah. Achievements, family. Built. Uh, this is Data. USS Sutherland. Nice. Very nice. And all the all the stuff in there. Um, yeah, we are getting a little bit of a frame thing, but nothing nothing too crazy. See all the all the paintings and stuff. They they've got this modeled after the uh, the later seasons when they had these like decorative touches here, as opposed to having the uh, the ships along the side there. Now, the one thing that I'm missing, and I, and I think it, I must be through this door here. But one of these doors used to have, they had the ships on a little hallway and you would come down and the ships would be on, on, on the, embedded in the wall there. I guess that must be the, when you come from that direction, because I thought it was from one of these directions that they would have the ships on the wall. But uh, anyway, so we can't go through that way because that's not done yet. But we'll come back here and let's go to another part of the ship, shall we? They've got quite a few decks here. They've got quite a few areas, but they, they don't have everything done yet, obviously. Um, 
So you can see on deck one here, they have the main bridge, observation lounge, ready room. Deck two seems to be the one that's the most fleshed out right now. So they got data's quarters, worst quarters, the cargo elevator, escape pods, and a crew lounge. We'll go there just for a few moments so we can see some of the the main uh, features because a lot of these will be sort of repeated as we go. So come out here, and I got to remember that that's the turbo lift to come through. That there's only one turbo lift working right now, and if it's very easy to forget which one it is, and and then you're you're lost hopelessly forever. Um, so cybernetics lab, none of these I think are open. Astrophysics, uh, there's not. See, like this is a turbo lift, but I can't get in there because it's not the one that's working. So you get turned around quite easily. And for some reason, the crew quarters door is opening, but there is nothing rendering, so I'm not going to walk out into space there. They do have the escape pods, uh, where you can come in here and, and hop into an escape pod. Now, I don't think the I don't think the escape pods actually launch or anything, but you can at least see how the escape pods were laid out on the ship. There are quite a lot of them. Now, they laid this out based on how the architectural diagrams were that were published in books about the uh, you know about the ship um, so some things match up one to one with the series and some things are not quite um, and that's just because they're following this one source of information um, we've got some aid stations we got fluids lab now I always have problems trying to figure out where people are so there's an escape pod so we gotta find Worf's quarters, and we got to find Data's quarters. Now, I think Data is across the the way from the um, the crew lounge. Aha, uh -huh, crew lounge. So he, so yeah, here's Data's here. Come in, walk in here. You can see this was pre the time when he had a bed lying in there. Um, it was funny. I came in here with the NPCs on. There was an NPC just sitting in this chair just staring at this painting like it was the most beautiful thing ever in the world. <laughs> um, we got a little uh, visual of Tasha Yar there. And this is where Data would sit and do all his computations. And then this door here, don't know where that leads. But it's not, it's not functional, so who knows at this point. Because Data's quarters were not real quarters. These were... These were, um, I think as far as the series went, this was like a redress of sick bay question mark, something like that. Um, which is why it looks this way. But I think as far as the in universe is concerned, he didn't have a real, he didn't have a typical, um, crew quarters because he didn't need to like sleep and all that stuff. He didn't need all the same creature comforts. So they kind of shoved him in like a, what would have been a lab or something and probably built these these inter, interstitial walls and all that stuff in here. And here's where, again, the bump mapping and stuff really starts to drive me nuts because that really looks not good, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, not a not a uh, artist in any stretch of the imagination. So here we got a crew lounge um, with their little... Uh, I wonder if you can play these little games. No, you can't. I don't think you can interact with them. Now, I've always wondered what those old games were. They look like... It looks like you would play, like, Space Invaders on them or something like that. It's like like a four-way Space Invaders uh, is what it, it always looked like there. But um, you can see where... This is one of many crew lounges. Like, just from what I understand from the, from the ship, like, there's a crew lounge on pretty much every deck. I mean, there's a thousand people, so it makes sense that there would be a crew lounge... So many of them, but there's a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them around. Um, auxiliary now, where is Worf's? Ah, here it is. Here's Worf's quarters. You can see uh, his batleth on the uh, on the wall there. He's got his weird his weird seat. He sometimes sat in. That was all kinds of craziness, and it's very very sparkly for some reason. I think there's a some kind of lighting weirdness going on there. Um, and he's unmade bed. 
I mean, the funny thing about this is this is exactly as it looked in uh, in the series, but it's for some reason it was always slightly unmade his sheets and stuff, which is just hilarious that they recreated that here in this. Um, he's got his his duck tang and I forget what they call those blades. And then this door, I assume, leads to the lavatory, possibly. Um, and, or maybe that one does. Not quite sure which one does what. But anyway, that concludes our Deck 2 tour, which actually brings us back to the turbo lift here. I believe this is the one, right? Uh-huh, it is. All right, so I'm not going to go through the entire ship, um, but I'd like to hit a few areas. So we can go to, I'd like to go 10 forward at some point, but let's go to, I mean, the battle bridge is more of the same of what we've seen. Um, Star cartography is not much to see there. Picard's quarters, yeah, they're, they're okay. Uh, I think we see enough quarters for now. We can go to Nacelle Control, which we saw in one episode. Oh, 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 oh okay, okay, that was okay. <laughs> Game's, game's very angry. Very, very angry. All right. And here's the nacelle control. You can see sort of the uh, the Jeffries tubes uh, that they have modeled. They have a few of them modeled here. You can't go up and down yet because they're not all modeled yet. But uh, you can see how they, how they have things here. I can't seem to crouch for some reason. I think that's my numeric pad. Uh, I, don't, I, don't have it, I don't have it mapped. But here's nacelle control. This was from the one uh, episode. It was, uh, I want to say Night Terrors, but it was some, something like that. Um, where there was a murder, murder, aboard the ship. And, well, actually, there was a there was a murder aboard the ship back in when it was being built in Utopia Planitia. And the guy who murdered the people uh, was a telepath, and then a tele uh, he left some kind of telepathic uh, signature in in the walls, <laughs> dripping in the walls, and uh, some other partial tele telepath start was assigned here, was working, and became overwhelmed by it, and went up these stairs, opened the door, and took a swan dive into the plasma stream there. You can see the uh, nacelle all the way as it goes all the way out to the back there. This is the port nacelle? Question mark? Um, yeah, you can see how that all fits in there. So you got that all up to up to the specs that you would you would expect since everything, given everything else, all the other attention to detail they've had here. I'm assuming this door doesn't open, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so... Little quick, little quick jaunt there. Let's go to main engineering. Everybody wants to see main engineering, right? That seems like a a good place to to stand. All right, now there's a lot of force fields here because most of this deck is not is not accounted for right now. But if I come in here, there's a, there's actually an astrophysics lab right there, isn't there? I did not know that. Um, but this is the area where having the animated stuff kind of does a a number on your um, frame rate. So far, so good though. We're doing okay here, but it's probably slowing down a little bit. Now, so they got the warp core modeled and all that stuff, and. I think if, if there's any changes here, I would say, number one, I need to work on these lights a little bit, because the way it worked in the series, even though it was only one light that was being turned on as it would go down, it it's, the light diffused enough that it looked like there was one light and then maybe a light above and below that were chasing along with it, because the light would look, sort of diffuse out in the little tube that they had in. So I think, I think if they can replicate that, where it looks like actually one bright light and then two lesser lights above and below that chase it down there, uh, this would look a lot uh, a lot truer to form. Now it doesn't look like any of the, uh, the elevators are 
in service the little the small lifts that would take you down to the other areas here or up to that deck uh, but that's all right so far and then over here now I've got this all in green which might be the actual color that it was in the series but the problem is it never really looked that gr this green um, as far as when you were watching it always looked a lot darker than this because of the way the lighting was so I think what the real problem here is not so much that it's green but that the lighting is too bright in this area um, it's pro it's normally during this during the episodes it's it's a lot darker here uh, with the overhang and stuff and then that makes this all look a lot darker than than this it's not quite as bright green as that so that might be something they want to look into you got your isolinear chip banks here that you can't do anything with unfortunately um, and back here would lead to the computer core but they've locked that off because apparently you can uh, fall through the ship there as I have already demonstrated on a different area so that's it and they got the they got the good old good old pool table with the uh, all the doodads and widgets on it the cutouts of the enterprise and all the various uh, various buttons knobs and switches or at least tactile buttons anyway and that turbo lift doesn't work, so we gotta go back to uh, this one. Let us go to 10 forward, shall we? And let's have, let's get ourselves a good old fashioned libation, shall we? And uh, get, get a roll on here. Okay, so there is 10 forwards. Ooh, wow, they, oof, oof, that door. Yeah, they're going to have to work on that door a bit because it's <laughs> there's way too much light coming through that. Um, plus, they, they forgot to put the uh, the Starfleet symbol. So have to put the symbol of the Starfleet on on the on the doors. Um, but yeah, here we go. Ten forward, my friends. Get to see the ten forward lounge. You get to see all the various flasks and doodads being used here. There is a they are missing a computer console because I remember. During the episode when, um, what was it? Uh, Data, Troy, and uh, O'Brien were, and Riker went down to a planet. Um, Riker got injured in a, in a storm, but the other three got taken over by aliens and they started to take over the ship and trying to go back and rescue the rest of their people because they were all, um, you know, they were outcasts or, or prisoners or something, and they were pulled out of their bodies and put into a, a storm cloud and left to rot there for the rest of their lives. And when they were here in 10 forward, which they took over and had hostages, there was a little console like right around here that they were using to gain access to the ship and stuff. So I think that's the only thing that's really seems to be missing here. Other than obviously there's probably supposed to be shelves and stuff here with, with liquor and stuff behind it, I would imagine. Um, and this, this sand painting looks, looks like it needs a little bit of work too, but, uh, and I'm not being, I'm not being overly critical. Oh, wow. You can see, yeah, they got a lot of seams that you can see through, uh, to the other parts of the ship there. Um, not being overly critical. I just want to kind of point out some things. Oh, they got the, uh, good three dimensional chess game going here. Although it looks like the pieces are. Like the game board is disappearing a little bit as I walk around. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm being slightly critical just because I figure it it helps <laughs> it helps to just see, have another perspective on it. Everything that's been done so far is quite awesome, and I'm just being my old picky self here. Um, where is the? It's not back this way. It's on the other side. As per the usual, I think 10-4 is the only thing on this area, right? What does this say, actually? 10-4 storage, okay. I wonder if that's... See, now, here's the weird thing. This says 10-4 storage, but didn't uh, didn't Guinan have a an office? Like, I remember when they first encountered the Borg, when they queued through them out, 
to where an area of space where Guinan was familiar with. Um, maintenance. Huh. I remember her coming out of Ten Forge. They contacted her. She came out of Ten Ford and she walked into an office. Yeah, this these both say storage. Hmm. So I wonder if I wonder if she had like an office or if it was just the storage area that she walked into where she had the uh she was able to look at the view screen and stuff. Uh but anyway, let's see. Let's take one more trip here. Um Well, let's take two more trips. We'll take a trip to Sick Bay. <laughs> It's gonna be one of them. It's gonna be one of them episodes. We're gonna feel evil at the end of this, I imagine. Uh, let's go to Sick Bay. Okay, I guess I'm not going those ways. These are all just generic-looking doors. Okay, it's gotta be this way, right? Astrophysics lab, aid station, aid station. Oh, HMO, HMO office, <laughs> HMO health medical officer. I, um, sure that isn't supposed to be CMO chief medical officer office. <laughs> it's, HMO means something entirely different. There you go. Sick bay. And yeah, they don't have the storage room back here. It looks like, but here's her office. Here is Dr. Crusher's office. And got all these like sample jars behind her and stuff. They always kind of wondered about. It's like, is she just is she just like storing <laughs> she's storing a, some kind of psych, psychotropic drugs right behind her? <laughs> it's like, you look like you could use a buzz right now. I like that they did put the um, the medical staff in there. A little staff symbol. That's pretty good. Microcellular DNA analysis. Good, good, good. They got the different red and blue uh, jars of sample jars or whatever they're called. Uh, growth jars. And if I had the uh, NPCs on, I think there's usually an NPC that's kind of just laying there. <laughs> just enjoying, enjoying life. Uh, I think we've we've done what we can here. Um... I think the next thing we're going to do is go to the. We're going to go to the shuttle bay, because it's really the only thing that we can have um, a lot of interaction with, a lot more interaction than the rest of the ship, as you'll see in a moment. I could show you the holodecks. The holodecks aren't. There's nothing done about the holodecks yet. Um, but here's the brig. See, they did a pretty good job of modeling this. Everything looks correct here. I wonder. I don't remember those, but I guess I guess that makes sense there. Um, all right, and then the next set of doors that look like that should be the shuttle bay. Yeah, shuttle bay two, my friends. So they have things set up for the tractor beams, but they don't have tractor beams yet to pull you in and out of things. And of course, you got this upper area here that you're supposed to be able to get to at some point and then this area which I imagine is the cargo storage elevator which I didn't actually show you that on deck two the cargo elevators but there's a there's a cargo elevator that goes throughout the entire ship um, so that you can transport cargo to the various decks uh, there's not much to see there but it's kind of nice it's kind of neat that they have that uh, modeled but what we're gonna do is let's go and interact with this perhaps Let's open the door. Now they've got the... They've got some of the sound effects. Oh, that now we go. Okay. They didn't have... Uh, last time I did this, I couldn't hear the sound effect of the door opening, but now I can hear it, which is good. Now we can get the shuttle bay... Shuttle door open. What shuttle is this? It just says Shuttlecraft 15, huh? Ah, okay. I was hoping it would say like Elbaz or some or some one of the ones that was actually used. Alright. Sit down here. And now we are in control of the shuttle. Let's see if we can make it out of the shuttle bay door, huh? Maybe? 
No. Oh, there it goes. It was, it's it's uh <laughs> it's having some problems. We're making it slowly but surely. There we go. Everything's catching up here. Okay, and we're off. And we're flying. So we're between the nacelles, as you would expect. Now, I imagine you can't get too far here. But it's kind of nice to be able to do a flyby of the ship. Also, you can do a saucer section, saucer separation of the ship. Um, which you can view both from outside here. There's a, a mod, there's a, a button on this shuttle um, that does it. And also you can see it in... You can also see it in the, um, uh, from the battle bridge. So you can do it from both sections. Now, off camera, I went and landed on the saucer section and I got out of the ship to, to look around and <laughs> fell right through. But I believe that there is a section down here that you can actually land on and walk around the ship without actually falling all the way through to space here. Don't crash. Don't crash. Oh, we're gonna crash. We are gonna crash. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> get stuck in a whole lot of stuff here. Now let's go like this and then we'll hit enter and it should land me at some point here. Hopefully. <laughs> it's not landing very easily. Mind you. Yeah, there's the remote saucer saucer separation there. There we go. Very gently coming in for landing. Very, very gently as everything as everything switches on me. Okay, let's uh, open the door. Excellent. And the shuttle is still moving forward. <laughs> Goodbye, shuttle. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can come out and walk around on the ship. Like I said, up on the saucer section, you tend to fall through. I'm worried about some of these windows because I noticed if you walk over one of these windows, you tend to fall through there as well. So I'm just trying not to try to avoid those things if at all possible. I'm wondering if I can walk up the side of the ship and get back inside. I have a feeling it's going to stop me at some point here. I have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, nope. Uh, well, there I go. I, don't walk on any of the windows. <laughs> don't walk on any of the windows, and then you'll... You, I, I was going to try to try to get up into the shuttle bay again. Um, let's do emergency transport. This has not worked too well when I fall out of the ship, but let's see if it put me... Oh, nice. It put me uh, right outside the shuttle bay. Oh, cool. That worked that time. Awesome. Where's the shuttle at? Does the shuttle disappear? I guess the shuttle disappeared now because I'm not on it. <laughs> but uh, this is what I was trying to do anyway. I was trying to walk up the side of the ship and come back in here. So there you go. We got that working for us. I wonder if I can... I wonder if they do anything if I deactivate the force field. <laughs> ah, that's great. It does have an effect. Oh, uh, there goes all the cargo. See ya, cargo. Goodbye. <laughs> I was hoping they would have some kind of effect there. That's great. That is fantastic. Alrighty then. I think we've seen... We've seen most of what there is to see right now, as far as this is concerned. Like I said... This is more about celebrating the nerdiness of those uh, out on the internet who are doing things for the love of it. Um, but do, 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 I think we've hit all the main the main areas. Let us end our tour in Picard's quarters, perhaps. That sounds like a good idea. Why not? We'll go sit down. We'll play his flute. We'll enjoy ourselves. There's a turbo lift there. So yeah, Picard's actually on a deck that's a lot wider than all the rest of the decks, which is pretty funny. Yeah, here we go. Alright. I still don't know what this... I remember that being on his wall, but I don't remember what that 
was supposed to be a symbol of. But we can sit down in his in his chair, I hope. And there we go. And we can be a proper we can be a proper starship captain now. So this has been stage nine. Actually, you know what? Let's go on to there. Can I go on to the main menu from here? I don't think I can. <laughs> I don't think I can. I would like to go on the main menu. Let's let's let me do that real fast, and I'll be right back. All right, my friends, this has been stage nine, the version 0.0.6 release by Dapper Robot Bear, Eric Roberts, Patrick Phillips, uh, Tato Diorid, uh, L14R10, Night Fever, Evan Whiteside, and Eric Philo, <laughs> and possibly others. I, I, I don't know all the names. I haven't written anything down, but I will leave links. Uh, down in the description both to their videos on this and to their website so you can go download this and uh, play with it yourself if you want um, again really enjoying what I'm seeing here hope that they continue forward with this it's very ambitious I see a lot of these fan made projects that are quite ambitious like this and they're all done for the love of it so uh, all, all the love in the world to them and uh, so thanks so much for watching everybody and I'll see you next time